I think that we spend more money campaigning than pre, uh, uh, building our country. We spend more money campaigning to be president than more money invested in changing the economy of Ghana. And pragmatic leaders that can transform this country, not political platforms. Leaders. Does the influence of politics um, and managing management of these parties become so big a deal that there is um, that four-year term that you have to transform an economy? Is it even possible? Yes, it is possible. With a, you, your wife gets pregnant nine months. Mm -hmm. She gives birth. In four years, I don't want to be president for eight years. Never. You see, when you put proper you structures, four year term. yes, I want a one term presidency. Wow. To change the face of Ghana and people will see. You see, when you put proper structures in place, mm -hmm. automatically it works. Um, saying, saying on the back of that, what are some of the gaps or the focus areas that we should have concentrated on, in your opinion, in the mm -hmm. past? We are, we've done okay, infrastructure. And what again? Uh, did I mention health? Yeah, health. Yes. Yeah. You see, these are the basic necessity of life that we need to take care of. Have we been able to overcome these problems after 65 years? No. Look at our roots. Very bad. Even mining companies, and look at the roots there. Very bad. These are companies making huge sums of money and benefits in this country. Yet government cannot tax them to construct proper roads. Now you go out in this town, that you realize that every route Every government will construct it three or four times before they leave power. Same rule. We are only resurfacing the roots every year to make more money. How can we be thinking like this? Now, look at our f a country is able to grow by agriculture. The number of things you produce. What do you produce? Mm -hmm. We have cocoa, we have timber, we have bauxite, and all those things. Ask me. Uh -huh. 21st century slaves, let me put it that we are 21st century slaves, like Nkuma said, the neocolonialism. That is where we have got to. We've given out everything that belongs to the ordinary Ghanaian, to the foreigners. So that's why when you take a plane from any part of the world coming to Ghana, there are more white people in the plane than blacks. Because they know that Ghana is an avenue for them to exploit. Because the Ghanaian man is just here. It doesn't work. We just give out everything and we sit down and watch. So our slaves, our kids are now slaves. We are also becoming slaves. And yet we've mortgaged all the natural resources that we have again. So tell me, are we not slaves? Where's the independent? The, the MPP. Which independence are you celebrating? The MPP. I want, no, I'm coming. I want you to answer. <laughs> everything they have to dictate to you. Where's the freedom? Which freedom do you have? That even your currencies. They manipulate it. Whatever you want, IMF, whatever you, they give you back your own money and say they are borrowing you money. Whatever you do here in the world, they manage it. So where's the freedom? Uh, even before my next question, uh, what, I, what I was going to ask earlier on, is it, this is the, this is the voice of a politician um, before getting into power. These are things we've heard from numerous politicians before they, they take that seat. But when it gets into, when they get into parliament, when they take the seats of government, they cause for alarm on, on the kind of structures we have set up, you know, um, to, to run and govern the country. When you promise me something and you don't deliver, how do I, what should I take you for? Either you are not serious, you are a liar, or you are incompetent. So when the politician promise Ghanaians, they will give them ABC and they come to power, they don't give. You take them, they come with good promises. Very, very, very interesting promises that you think that when they get to power, then they are confused. They have power. They don't even see that you are important. They don't even see the difficulties you are facing. And that is what I'm saying. I always say that when I become president, a lot of incentives given to politicians must be taken off. For instance, car. You buy your own car. You pay your own house workers. You buy your own fuel. No free fuel for you no allowances you get but everything that every ordinary Ghanaian is not entitled to as an ordinary Ghanaian you are also not as ordinary citizen because when you are in power when you're not in power you have common sense when you go to power you don't you lose the common sense because everything becomes free for you free car 
free house workers, uh, house, uh, household workers, mm -hmm. free f fuel, wherever you go, hotel bills are being paid, air ticket, everything's free. Why should we give you so much? When we give you the way out of power, that is when you, you begin to realize that, hey, the economy is tough. The so when we take off all yeah. this done, because you are getting salary. Yes. You are paid salary. Yeah. If you have to go for official duty, fine. They can take an official car for you to take you there. But once you are out of official duty, you should use your salary to pay the bills. So if we do the same with our ministers and our public workers and all that, they will begin to put policies that will make sure that cushion everybody's life. On, on the back of that, uh, the MPP in well promised the NAPCO, the 1D1F, the free SHS. These are interventions and these are um, things that were supposed to help, you know, with development. Like you mentioned that you would, um, things you want to tackle like education, like agriculture. All these are similar to what the MPP government also or uh, uh, kicked. And what makes or what will be different from example with yours if or with you, if you, you took office with something like this? Delivering and not being corrupt, dedication to the promises you make, implementing them the best and having a proper blueprint. That is what the MPP did not have. And that's why you see that NAPCO have crashed. One district, one factory crashed. Planting for food and agriculture crashed. You know why? Because if you go to the market, the prices of food stuff are higher than the items. Kinky, pure water, the ordinary things that we consume, just look at the prices. I'm not, I'm not the one to tell you that it has crashed. I just want you to make the comparison. You see, we are not serious as a nation. I'm being honest with you. Our leaders are not proactive. Our leaders do not think of, they don't make sacrifices. The ordinary Ghanaian make more sacrifices than our leaders. If our leaders should make such kind of sacrifices in the world, the best worker in the world is a Ghanaian working abroad. And the worst worker in the world is a Ghanaian working in Ghana. That's my quotation. Quote it from me. Yes, analysis. Yes. When we are out of this, of this country, we are so dedicated and patriotic in what we do because we are monitored. And when we are monitored, we want to show and do the best. But when we are in our own country, we have this word that we call, and yeah, me Papa Juma. It's not my father's word. If I hear that word when I become president, you go to jail. That word. <laughs> it's not my father's work. It's, it's Kwame Kuma said is the, the black man is capable. Black man is capable. <laughs> but when there are other opportunities available to the black man, the black man is useless. That's it. Do you understand it? Um, Do you understand um, the quotation very well? I, I, want to, I want to get more to it. <laughs> if there are no that, opportunities available to the black man. Yes, he's capable. When there are other opportunities, the black man is useless. So the black man is never capable of managing his own affairs. He's only capable when there are no other opportunities available to him. Uh, nobody will borrow him money. Nobody will do his work for him. He's stuck somewhere. Lock us up in this room. Okay, all of us, all of us, including your crew. And we believe there's nobody outside. We will manage and find What's a way of coming. But once we know somebody, oh, call this person to come and open the door. Hey, you're, you're in Tenasi. Somebody will come and open it. That is the idea of the black man. But in actual sense, but we don't plan. We fail to plan. And whoever fails to plan, plans to fail. So black men, I don't know whether it's a skin or it's a geographical location. All the African leaders, think about it. Where's the African trade? Where's the African market? Where's the African currency? Where's the African leadership? We've all become beggars. You see, last four years, I saw in the TV or three years, that the African leaders all queue in front of China president or Chinese president to beg for money. When your continent is richer than the rest of the continent in the world, by lack of leadership, you become a beggar. We beg too much, and that's why the white man doesn't believe in us. So we tend to become beggars in the 21st century. We beg and beg to the extent that everybody looks at us, and a black man is never, we don't have value anymore. You know why they don't respect us? It's not because we are poor, it's because we are stupid.